I take to the floor of the Senate this afternoon to call Senator's attention to the worsening crisis in inter-country adoptions. And I must say, Madam President, it saddens me to have to do this because much of the crisis in foreign adoptions or inter-country adoptions is um, happening as a result of policies of our own federal government. I'm fortunate to have had two loving families, two, two loving parents and, and a loving family. Um, my dad is 96 years old. I visited with him yesterday. My mom uh, sadly passed away several years ago. But I was fortunate, I was among the fortunate people on the face of this planet to have two loving parents and a loving family. That's not the case uh, around, uh, all around the world. Uh, uh, internationally, in particular, there are countless children who have no mom, no dad, uh, no family, uh, no extended family to care for them. They, they reside in the most deplorable conditions in orphanages um, and as wards of the state. Americans have always been compassionate for these children without a forever family. And that, that compassion extends to children, not only um, orphaned in the United States, but also outside of our borders. For decades, Americans have led the world in welcoming children from around the globe to come to the United States and be part of a forever family. As a result, more than 150 children adopted from foreign countries are now growing up in the United States, 150,000. These children and their adoptive families are examples of America at its best. But I'm here to say to my colleagues today, Madam President, that intercountry adoption is in real trouble. And much of the reason that intercountry adoption is in trouble is coming from our own federal policies from unelected bureaucrats, particularly at our own Department of State. The number of international children finding an American home has plummeted in recent years. And listen to this statistic. In the year 2004, Americans adopted 23,000 children from foreign countries, 23,000. Last year, 2019, that number had fallen below 3,000, an 87% drop from 23,000 only 15 years before to 3,000 in 15 short years. Now, we are well aware, people who've been looking into this issue are well aware of what's causing the decline, and one of the reasons is Russia. Um, because of foreign policy, disagreements, Russia has shut its doors to inter-country adoption. We've pleaded with the Russian government about this, and, uh, and we've not made much progress. But that's one of the factors, not, not the only factor, and not even the principal factor. But that, that's on the Russian government. It saddens me that they've done that. But the biggest reason for the decline in inter-country adoptions by Americans comes within our own government, our own State Department. For years, the State Department and its adoption accrediting entity have demonstrated a clear and consistent bias against intercountry adoption. It saddens me to say this. It's unbelievable that I have to say this. But career bureaucrats in the State Department have deliberately obstructed the, the adoption process with new fees, new requirements that amount to red tape, unrealistic standards on foreign governments, and these bureaucrats have placed burdensome regulations on 
adoption provider agencies. These regulations make it nearly impossible for adoption providing agencies to maintain accreditation. And this has been done by design, and the results are devastating. In the last year and a half, more than 30 adoption providing agencies have left the intercountry adoption space. And we are losing more agencies every month. Our federal government's State Department's bias against intercountry adoptions is unmistakable. In 2018, for example, the department directly intervened to prevent three well-respected adoption agencies from being re-accredited. A federal judge dismissed the department's reasoning as, quote, quite unconvincing, unquote, and, quote, simply illogical, unquote. That's what a federal judge had to say about the reasoning of this little part of the State Department that seems determined to end foreign adoptions. During that same year, 2018, a journalist quoted a State Department insider who confirmed that the Office of Children's Issues, the OCI, in the State Department is biased against intercountry adoption. Why they would take this position, Madam President, is beyond me. Adoption advocates followed up by requesting Freedom of Information Act documents about this claim, this claim by the journalist who quoted the State Department insider. But the Department of State has resisted this Freedom of Information Act request and is still yet to produce any documents two years after the statutory FOIA deadline has passed. There are plenty more examples. Last year, the State, the State Department hosted an adoption symposium that may as, well, may as well have been caused the International Anti-Adoption Symposium. This is funded at our State Department by our own taxpayer dollars. Our own tax funds funded a conference featured that featured radically anti-adoption speakers who openly denounced the practice of international adoptions. It's hard to believe, and it's hard to imagine a worse use of taxpayer dollars. The adoption community has voiced concerns about the State Department's anti-adoption bias, but it seems that government has not listened. And now I will say this, is, this has been a problem in, in State Departments headed by uh, Republican secretaries and by Democrat secretaries. When adoption providers privately shared their concerns about the accrediting agency, the department responded by issuing a public letter threatening the future of inter-country adoption. Madam President, the Office of Children's Issues, OCI, is slamming the door in the face of thousands of orphans who need a family. And they're saying no to willing American couples who are pleading to give these international children a forever family here in our great country. It seems that OCI's priorities are out of step with, the, with their statutory mandate, and also they're out of step with the values of this country and basic morality. We need to change the policy of the State Department in this regard, I say to my colleagues. Madam President, I call on my colleagues on the Foreign Relations Committee to hold an oversight hearing to review the State Department's role in inter-country adoption and to examine the allegations of bias against inter-country adoption and to hear from accredited agencies and other stakeholders about their experience working with the Department of State and its accrediting entity. I think such a hearing would be revealing, and I think the results would be troubling to members of the Congress. I also call on the Senate Permanent Committee on Investigations to investigate allegations raised 
against the U.S. approving accrediting entity and the State Department's Office of Children's Issues. It's time, actually, to transition the U.S. Central Authority from the Department of State to a more receptive and more compassionate, more understanding um, home, such as the Department of Health and Human Services. This would allow experienced child welfare professionals to oversee inter-country adoptions. Madam President, we have a great Secretary of State. I've known Mike Pompeo for years. I think he's got all he can preside over, and I don't for a minute think that the Secretary of State understands what this small entity in his State Department is doing. I think he, he, he must have no idea that this is going on. But I think the solution is to move this function from the State Department. And I, but I would call on the Secretary of State to put a hold on planned changes down in this little agency uh, populated by unelected bureaucrats who are hostile to adoption. I think we should put a hold on planned change, changes in the accreditation accomplished uh, accreditation compliance system until there's been a full review of OCI's bias against adoption. The, the competence of their staff needs to be investigated and we need to look, we need to give an open assessment shining the light of day on the impact that this small group of bureaucrats is having on something that I think most Americans support. Madam President, the American people believe in adoption. They believe in giving orphans anywhere in the world an opportunity to have a forever family. They believe in giving couples here in the United States the opportunity to provide a home for these children who are less fortunate than, than most of us have been, most of us within the sound of my voice have been. And I think this uh, I think the American people believe in, 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 in a change in this inexplicably anti-American and anti-family policy. And so today I'm down on the floor of the United States Senate to shine a light on this tragedy, on this outrage. I would ask my colleagues to remember the teaching of the psalmist, give justice to the weak and the fatherless, maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. I think Americans believe in the sentiments of the psalmist in that regard. I think we're ready to heed the plight of the fatherless. Let's not neglect our duty in correcting the situation we find ourselves in and in once again becoming the country that provides a a welcoming, loving outreach to children to be part of a forever American family. Thank you, Madam President. And I yield the floor.